All right, Fly Quest, they'll lock in the Akali. So Akali okay. versus Oriana is our mid lane matchup here in this one. The Annie Draven lane versus the Zeri Lulu. I feel like clearing his own. So since Blaver is clearing his own Hello. camps, that means that you can also expect your opponent in Spica to try to be doing the same thing as MS steps forward, looking for Vikla, but Spica's ready to gank. He lands the W2, he chases him through the flash there with a stun. Vikla wants to go in! Oh! Ready to cover it. and trade the objective, yeah. right? You can fight for it if you want to, or prioritize just getting extra pressure on the other side of the map if you don't. Spica walking mid as MS has this wave shoved up to the turret, just applying a little bit of extra pressure. Do with Wukong having a lead already. This Herald is theirs, and they need it to snowball. Because in FlyQuest's side, they're scaling pretty much everywhere. You cannot give them a chance to buy time. Well, right now, Fudge is trying to buy time for Blabber to get in and help him out. Impact tries to go unstoppable, but Blabber swoops in, and again, it's Blabber ganking second and coming out on top. Spika tries to fight back here a little bit, gets the stun, gets away. At this point, and you just need to come and play around me. FlyQuest, obviously, you know, they don't want to give up anything for free. They're no, not they contest. Yo, oh, Blabber immediately tanking the damage from Sejuani, but turning it around, and they kill off Ayla first. Berserker's keeping Prince away, and Spika is gonna be chopped to pieces. Jimenez grabs the kill, C9 gets four. Holy moly, it is nothing left for FlyQuest. They are being embarrassed on the rim. His only job is to escort Prince to safety. This Draven is frightening. Jimenez yeah. is just going to take the turret solo here in mid. That is the first turret of... Um FlyQuest is having a bit of a hard time responding because there, Isla was sitting all the way down bot lane with his Akali while Prince and Siri was roaming towards the top lane. And, you know, this anti-synergy definitely can't exist in a game like this one because then we're just slowly going to see C9 taking over, getting these turrets for free. You always have to try to be one step ahead when you're playing. man. 6,000 gold up this early. They're walking everybody top, seeing if they might be able to make another play here. Remember, the tier 1 turret is already gone. m &S has already used his shockwave, so they don't have that immediately ready. Spika dashes forward, regrouping with the rest of his team, but they Everything do... Everything on Bata. Yeah, we're kind of seeing FlyQuest starting to crumble a little bit here under the pressure, and they're eventually going to have to pull the trigger. Trigger, take C9 is looking to steal every possible resource they can. Blabber's smite comes in true as the teleport from FlyQuest. They're calling their moment. They want to go in now. Blabber's the target. They go over the wall there with Mikla, but Blabber's right back onto him. Blabber looking for the kill, and they've already killed the enemy mid laner. He's on a rampage, and Impact is next. Unstoppable? I don't think so. Fudge takes that kill and reposts some of the CC that would have come after him as he chases after Here. Prince. C9 are just snowballing this game out of control, but you can't hate FlyQuest for, for taking those opportunities because when you're this out of it doesn't matter. He can just go right back to auto attacking. He doesn't even have any life steal. He's not worried about it. Using the blood rush and the spinning axes to proc the sheen of the Essence Reaver. C9 is going to take down their sixth turret of the game. Because, I mean, technically, they're not going to need Baron to crack to your freeze at right. this point. <laughs> but, though, right? You know, if you don't have flash, it feels so difficult to ever get in. They see him coming over, so if Fjord can just go over the wall and start to actually push him away, they have the stun on Sven, they're just going to finish the Baron and look for the fight. Yeah, they're going right again <laughs> after that flash. That felt personal for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, C9 is about to crack the base to FlyQuest. Berserker gets caught by the Arctic Prison, but it won't matter because he has the cleanse. He's ready to immediately respond. The Tier 3 turrets fall in two lanes almost simultaneously as FlyQuest falls back and the inhibitors are under fire. Tier 3 turret in the top lane could be their next target if they want to go for it, but they may not even need to. They got two minions, two waves of minions crashing at the exact same time. C9. Pushing towards Nexus turrets now. First one's about to melt. Vikla goes in, but the Akali is about to die before he even drops the smoke. Ayla gets popped, and now Prince is about to be next. He can fall back, but the turrets don't move, and that means they're both out of the picture. Spika tries to tank up here on the front line, but Cloud9 got way too much damage. Prince wants in, but Berserker wants him out. He goes on a killing spree and takes out Vikla. Prince flashes back in the fountain, but it's all he can do. Sven and Berserker keep him zoned away, and Berserker nearly, nearly getting him, <laughs> but it won't matter. It's 12 to two. It's a C9 win. In a game, I do think that could be a, a really potential strong answer, but they're not going to go for it. You do have the set 20 at least. 
But generally, junglers don't actually have enough of an income to really kind of stifle like a... With Kuma up here, CLG are trying to respond, but Golden Guardians just say, all right, if you bring two, we're bringing three. And now it's Contracts having to make his way up as well. Even with that incredibly resistant plating, they're about to lose a plate here on Tier 1, but it's CLG looking to strike first. Dopla's going to be taken low. It's first blood back over to River, and who he stays alive. It'll be a one-for-one one trade as River drops. Six A's still trying to fight it out. Pooms at 200 HP, but a teleport's coming in. CLG's ready to punish, but Golden Guardian sidesteps. Can they get away even further? Beautiful oh. death sentence from Huhi to get Six A on the W2 from Sejuani, but now he's got to walk away as well. Gory and Palafox both under 100 health, while Six A keeps getting chased. He can't get one back, and CLG's got a two for one kill lead. Golden Guardian's <laughs> about to lose their support, and Palafox gets the money next. Oh, no. From getting any of those kills? Doklu would be completely out of the game, but now, oh, oh boy, Big Dokes gets caught by some chain oh. CC. We're going to get this before Rift Herald spawns. It's what we were talking with Roxa about in the previous game. It means you don't just have to handshake the neutrals, and you can also fight for that second one here in a minute or two. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, yeah. then all of a sudden, Jace has a free angle onto your back line. And if they don't commit, then he gets free shot class as he was actually getting from that spot. Sion was in a spot where, you know, only person they could really commit was onto him, but a great hook on a contract. They're ready to dive. The turret's still not down, but I don't think they care too much. Contracts is low. He's going to get eliminated. But now River gets picked up in return. It's jungler for jungler. CLG defending. Ligorish needs to run. He flashes over the wall. Right? Golden Guardians is up a little bit over that now as the spout be built a little bit further with Ligorish knocking down the first turret of the game. He just immediately snap back. Also with the demolished proc running the green tree secondary on his rune. It means easy chunks, easy plates. Gory's getting jumped on here. CLG forces a flash out of the enemy mid laner, but Luger is all alone on the other side of the river. He nearly dies, but he stays alive with 100 HP. Six A looking to finish him off, but can't quite do it. River's at 100 HP. Contract looks for him. The W2 is going to be sidestepped, and River is still on the run. Palafox chasing after who he and Six A is the Golden Guardians retreat. To flash defensively to avoid that blade caller, but we're back to live. It's on the dragon. Right back to the Whoa. dragon we go, and River's killed before they can do anything else about it. Golden Guardians have lost their jungler. The Drake hasn't been taken out yet. It's a double kill back over to Luger, and now Stick Say drops next. See? You can see Luger all of a sudden, a couple hundred gold ahead, two dragons now in the back pocket here of CLG, and they are finding themselves in an enviable position in this very important game. Finish off Luger, really, really hurts. Now Dokla's gonna get first power solo gold. So all of a sudden, pop of the gold, yeah, there you go. I uh, just thinking about. Uh, how does this game become winnable? It's gonna have to be about picks. They need to control vision. They need to try to find. Yeah, six, eight. That is, that is three times now. That has been like one auto of health on Luger. And those are those plays that can really start to get in your head, start to frustrate you. Because if you get that first kill, guess what? You get the second and the third kill yeah. because you would have had and that extra longsword, long sword, which would have got it for you. And that's really frustrating in that spot. But well played, honestly, on both sides. Six doing a good job anticipating that E coming through from the Zaya, the pullback on the feather. It's actually Gale Force up. There was the response of Gale Force up from Luger as well to try to get that direction, uh, but couldn't actually land it. The important thing now, is Luger already has the Navori done, so he is out to a nice little lead here. Six is gonna have some golden pocket, but oh. not quite done. Licorice ready for the engage here. Decimating smash onto Palafox, but Contracts is the target. Death Sentence pulls him back underneath the turret, but they still don't have the damage to kill him. Six is gonna grab it now, and he's traded for River. One for two as Dokla dies. Six is gonna be taken out next. It'll be a two for two. It's a bloodbath here in the mid lane as Gory's still off to the side. CLG's got more health overall. Licorice nearly dead, has to retreat. And the tier one turret falls in mid lane. CLG back to worth noting. I actually really like this build from Poom. Uh, he goes for the tank mythic here. You know, yeah. He is really, really strong going Radiant Virtue because the river yeah. landing next to the Scryer plant. So Poom recognizes he needs to back away here. River wants to go back into the pick, clear out some of the vision placed down by CLG. This is towards Warmog second, which surprised me a little bit, uh, but looking for the ulti here. Nice repel. He repels, but he's going to repel right back down onto the ball. Palafox was ready with a follow-up shockwave, and now River's killed off at the very start. Palafox flashes away. An angle to get onto a back line. Uh, then you can really start to threaten something. Nice little sidestep from Luger. They're going to turn around. Oh, Boom is ready to go, and Stixay flashes and still dies. Luger now looking for more. Gory's got a flash away. Fox. It's a five-man CLG Baron play as Licorice goes over the wall with a Blast Cone. Whom could potentially get caught out here, but the other Blast Cone's gonna get him right back to safety. River's nowhere near for a steal, and now Dokla is gonna apply more. Having that hard engage that uh, feels pretty much guaranteed. 
does make it really, really difficult because they kind of know he's the only real threat. Like, unless Gory can just walk up on one of these squishy carries, which he can't, no one else can really threaten them anymore. So they just have to put all pressure on 6A. And even if 6A survives... The Drake is what we're talking about because as Dokla draws all the pressure, CLG collects the prize. These kind of compositions. If you aren't snowballing, it's so difficult. So Golden Guardians are going to move out. But look at Pooh's positioning on the side. So hard to get in. Dokla finds River. That's all he had to do. Just keep Elise away. Make it so there's no sort of a chance that you lose this objective. Licorice flashing out. Contracts falling back to the rest of the team. And now CLG is ready to re-engage. Licorice is tanky. Tanky enough to live. But only for now. Dokla? I don't... Uh... I say will buy a stopwatch, which is something, but... It's just so hard to imagine he gets enough space to actually make something happen in a team fight because really all CLG has to do is pressure Stixe and there's no consistent damage. Gory just died solo to Dokla back in the mid lane off uh -oh. screen. This is a problem. All CLG has to do now is just dance just back wait. and forth with Golden Guardians and Dokla will win the game. Golden Guardians, the pressure on them just doubled with Gory dying in that 1v1. You said it earlier, you favor Yone as the game goes forward versus Jace in that solo matchup in a side lane scenario. Scenario, and that just showed off why. Dokla giving his team a 5v4 for still 30 seconds from now. Stixay's already dead. There's the trade of cooldowns. There's the superior resources left to spend. Golden Guardians have already lost two more. And Luger doesn't think that's enough. Who he and Licorice are trying to escape. But Poom's coming around from the Dokla's corner to the try base. to cut him off. Dokla's ready to go. They don't want Yone <laughs> taking the turret. As soon as somebody else has turret, that's when you go in. And that's when who he goes down. Poom leads the charge. And a teleport onto the cannon minion to try to keep it alive, tanking up the turret. Licorice knocks it away, so they'll at least target the others. But now he's stuck running back into the fountain. Luger, unstoppable. CLG, we're gonna end the game right now. Licorice's dead body won't even be able to rampage through him. Dokla resets his position back onto the fountain, unfortunately, but CLG still has so much time. 10 seconds on Stixe and River. CLG don't even care. They're trying to pad the stats and get another one on Gory. And there's the execution. CLG, we said they had to win it, and they won it. They'll take down Golden Guardian. CLG kick off Super Week in a huge... So ...when he was in Academy prior. So Aurelian Soul! And Aurelian Soul's big dragon, pick, too! Baby. <laughs> so team fighting is the MO um, within your team is tough. Com's oh gonna boy. be looked perfect for 100 Thieves. TP comes right in. But they do not overcommit early. They want to make sure they can back it up. Double of cleansing, but then still getting caught. Has to flash away. Now Closer could be in a little bit of trouble. It's first blood back over to TSM. It's going to be traded one for one. But can Closer get away? TSM has a 4v1 dog pile. Closer wants to reset, but he won't get it. The really game. Like, there's not too much spice in the draft. Yeah. So it's going to be very center of the round of Dragon. Now next up is going to be the Herald, of course. So what we need to keep an eye on in these next couple of minutes the advances here for the Herald, and you know they could potentially look at look, look at using it for you know sending Cyan down to the bot lane. Yeah, with with do a little swap because Jinx and Renasa desperately need space as well. Yeah, and Dirk Lugus coming ball lane. Oh, he lands the meteor and Double of Dimbusio have to run, but Double of just gets shredded by Aurelian Stone. And with Bjergsen out of the picture, they feel confident to continue working towards the Drake. Solo's gonna keep on frontlining as Tenacity tries to create some space for his team to move up and move in. TSM had to spend a few ultis there getting the kill onto Bjergsen. So now what can they do? They still want to stick around. They still want to fight for the Drake. They know they're going to 5v4, but they got to be careful. 100 Thieves is going to have their mid laner ready to TP back here soon. Solo's taking low, but he won't die yet. Closer goes in, and he takes down the enemy top laner when he gets away with it. 100 Thieves just stole that whole fight. They're going to grab themselves the Drake. They're going to grab themselves an extra kill. Yes, Closer will die for it. Fully agree. I actually would have expected Double Up to be bot lane throughout that so he can actually get access to the gold through minion wave, but also the turret plates as well. Oh, I mean, just the turret. Past 14 minutes. Yep. Uh, but he's there mid lane. Base check because of his tankiness. His tankiness is all health. He has a heart steal. He has a bomby cinder. Aurelian soul can melt through him as Closer is trapped in the pit. They fly out the Renata ulti over the wall, but it doesn't do a whole lot. And now Closer's forced to flash to disengage. Solo's gonna tank for a while. Tenacity eats some of the breath of life. And now he's retreating too. Both sides backing away. 
Both sides just trying to see if the other guy's gonna make a mistake. You're gonna see Solo wanting to retreat, but Closer jumps in on him before he can complete that recall. Solo, once again, trying to get back to the base. He does not have a teleport to rejoin. It will be a long walk. The rest of TSM is just trying to hold 100 Thieves at bay. Now, once again, Maple starting up the objective. Boogie's in the pit. TSM controlling it for now, but keep your eyes on Tenacity and Bjergsen. They're the ones who might be able to make this happen. There is no Renata ulti. Boogie jumps over the wall. The Drake is low. Now Boogie jumps back in with a blast cone, and that should be Drake for TSM. Very smart. Discipline from TSM. Wanted to go after Tenacity there. You saw Boogie roaming down, and as soon as he saw Boogie on the ward, Tenacity pops the ulti to run because he knows, even if he is Scion, even if he right now, in general, as long as you're above 10 per minute, you're doing really well, that's exactly where he is. And it's just easier once you get past laning phase to just continue to stack up because then you look at them. There it is. It's going to make the next fight a little easier. So once Sejuani's ultimate is going to be back up, even better. Maple's looking for him now. They're trying to make sure they don't let him escape with the ulti. Solo body blocked it, so Tenacity could not disengage. And now they're just going to have Maple try to stick to him here for the damage. They do a good job on Tenacity's part, at least interrupting the Breath of Light at first. But we're at the point where you can't interrupt it enough. Maple goes on a... Bjergsen gets the tier one top lane eventually, but... <laughs> I, I don't really like... Some... TSM still separated from their own jungler. The Drake's gonna be pulled out. Boogie wraps all the way around to join back up. TSM and 100 Thieves staring each other down. Some ulti spent on both sides. Who's gonna make the first move here? Closer still has Cyclone. Bjergsen still has his ult. That is huge. Everybody on TSM, not named Solo, does not have an ulti to work with. Over the wall comes Boogie. Chime's ready to go too. Closer's getting locked up. He wants the damage on Turtle. He won't be able to find it. He doesn't get the reset. Turtle goes on a killing spree. And the Drake goes to T. You need to do something else. You need to try to regain control on the other side because now, because of TSM is in a better condition, they're just going to immediately start. Okay! Oh, just sent it straight down the river. He teleported in, disrespecting 100 Thieves. But the Thieves Did were ready to respond instantly. Remember, the Chime has no ulti. He tried to use it chasing after Bjergsen earlier. So they yeah. Guys, chill. Calm down. We don't have to rush anything. Well, he might be in trouble yet again now. 100 Thieves in the enemy jungle looking for TSM. They take two of them low, but they aren't going to grab any kills just yet. They're still trying to stick around and contest the red, but it's Busio into the stopwatch trying to stay alive. Now, oh, double of just headshots, Jive. 100 Thieves finally might have found a good fight. Solo's going to die next. Both kills. Please well, tell me someone is going to try to stop Sidiwani from jump, jump, jumping in. I I'm getting anxious the watching this. 50 50, but it ends up going the way of 100 Thieves. The damage over the wall from Aurelian Soul, not enough to pick up any kills, so it's Baron plus a kill on the side. Dragon, because sure, they're walking off. Aurelian's really strong, but they just wasted Sidiwani all. Oh, oh no, no way! Tenacity. They flash Maple in front of Tenacity to guarantee they're able to keep him there, and he can't just ult out. Turtle goes on a rampage. 100 Thieves frontline has died. Closer tries to go in for the counter engage, but he's gonna get locked up. The Skies descent to stop 100 Thieves' follow-up, but the fight is chaotic. They're still looking for a little more damage, and Solo drops. Bjergsen so close to death, but the bailout might be able to bail him out after all. The stasis for Maple will not matter. One thousand gold rings. Like, the most important thing you think is, oh, Tenacity is down. You think they would lose. But if we look at that fight oh, again, the, the, <laughs> the, faith theft, the one that sets up the team for success, that's what we need to see more. That's what they want to do more, and Solo just pops. That Kisante is not tanky enough to survive. Double if now is Kraken Slayer, Infinity Edge, Lord Dominic's regards. Tanks are no longer tanks to this Jinx. It is a problem for the front line of TSM, and it's a problem that's not going to remedy itself anytime soon. Baron spawning in less than a minute and a half, and 100 Thieves have total control over the rift. This is such a change from 10 minutes ago, where the game felt entirely opposite. No, yeah. They're gonna need a massive Aurelian Soul ulti, a massive Recon engage, if they wanna be able to come out on top here. But Boogie just gets caught out, Chime goes over the wall, finds an initiation onto multiple targets, one for one trade, jungler for jungler. But where does it go from here? Well, you might be able to sneak the dragon with your AD carry. And we see both teams here, they're just fighting for, for their lives to get the mid prior. Because if you get the push, you can do whatever you want. Oh, double lift just destroys Solo. Counter attack from Aurelian Soul isn't enough to get anybody back this time. That is huge for 100 Thieves. 
They know that Solo is not tanky enough to just step up so disrespectfully, and they immediately punish. Great call from 100 there. Now you're in desperate situations if you are on TSM's side. Dragon is up, but 100 Thieves is trying to force another fight. TSM is a little bit split here. That's what I'm concerned about. Turtle could be in trouble. He's taken incredibly low, but he won't die yet. Tenacity gets him with the decimating smash as he dies. A one for one that 100 will take any day of the week. They kill off Aurelian Soul, and TSM has crumbled against 100 Thieves. Would you call that a good death there, Broxa? I would say so, yeah, that's a pretty decent death. <laughs> I would, if my Scion dies like this in Solo here, I would approve. Yeah, so there we go. happy. They get the Baron, they can get the Dragon. They don't even have the advances anymore. The next engage has to be clean or it's game over. There it is. This is the maximum Dragon. Otherwise, they're about to get steamrolled. Really is being popped there. Really oh. a game punch, but a pick. Look at that. Bjergsen caught. These guys are, you know, playing to, to really showcase that they can make it to playoffs, that they can end this spring split on a high note. Oh, the sweeper over the wall looking for closer, but TSM just walks into a meat grinder. Double is dominating, and Wild Turtle has been found out on the flank. Tenacity and closer going up against Turtle, and they'll bring him down. That might just... Double have said, hell no. And all of a sudden, I think the turtle is not so wild anymore. I would be pretty sad if I was in his... Attributed to that huge burst that we saw into TSM, just made it so hard for the front line to be able to... Be protect their carries, and now look at this position. It seems like a free Baron. Oh, Maple wanted to go over the wall because he thought he was just going to get the kill Tenacity. Oh, Super Mega Death Rocket misses, so Maple lives, but 100 feet. His play, his decision-making on Wukong, when he goes in, where he spins to, how he repositions, and when he does it with the clone, has all been immaculate this game. So much of the credit, I think, deserves to go to the jungler, even though... Ooh, people are going to explode. Well, 100 Thieves are looking to make this TSM's last stand. Tenacity approaches from the side. The Scion is huge. Look at the health bar on him. They can't get through the Gargoyle Stone Plate. Meanwhile, Solo and Boogie have to try to tank up on the side of TSM. Closer might finally get popped, but the Guardian Angel means he'll come back to life. He needs to try to escape back to the safety of his team. Minion Wave's gonna let him do it there with an Invis Strike. Now, they're focusing on the inhibitors. Mid has already fallen. Top has now fallen next. Chime trying to disengage, barely any HP remaining. Solo ain't have much left either, as Maple and Solo try to disengage. The re-engage from Chime won't hit anybody, and 100 Thieves is steamrolling towards the enemy Nexus. Now they back up, they don't want to give away anything for free. Double M gets executed on the singularity, he can't come back to life. Tenacity wants to use his dead body to try to pick up something else, but 100 Thieves can't end just yet. He was able to get the kill on towards Double M, so it extends the game a little longer. And hold on now, Boogie in trouble. He's gonna be bursted very low. They take him down. Double gets excited, and TSM's gotta be careful. They've still got the damage from Aurelian. Tenacity backs away. Solo's still here on the front line. Maple's gotta do all the work. He goes on a rampage. Now they gotta wait for the passive to go away from Tenacity. Double kill back over to Maple. Wants to fight some more. Can't get it. Maple under pressure. 100 thieves get it done. They take out four. They only lose two, and they're gonna walk it into the base and an exposed Nexus. There they are, they were going for double lift. So much in 100 Thieves, Spank just trying to protect him, and he stays alive. Huge win for 100 Thieves over TSM. They're gonna move up in the standing. What works, but you're blind picking it, and now you're countered by the Talia. Yeah, the Talia, I think, is just such a good answer into this draft. Four champs with dashes, right? And yeah. that is very difficult to deal with when you're laning against Zaya. I was assuming it was Core just actually getting up on top of him out of yeah. vision, perhaps, and forcing it, but um, that is... Oh, now he doesn't Luffy. have it for this play. So the Ignite's down. Jan's got the damage. First blood to Team Liquid. Oh, uh, map, so... This will be a free dragon picked up for Team Liquid. A solid start for the team. Winning bot lane, getting that early dragon stacked. And they are definitely looking for this win. I mean, again, this advantage as Centauron's gonna be sneaking in here and they can potentially try to bait Pyosha. Okay, Pyosha Gnion playing for the play. Core goes for the engage. Snap in onto Tomo. Knocked up, flashes away. Heal as well with Chain of Corruption thrown. The Dignitas absorb the play, but it costs them a lot. Yeah, I mean, they were trying to bait that, but honestly, it was way worse than that. Oh, Pyosha still wants it, says. Tomo, you walk back up. I'll punish you for that every day. Oh, that is rough for Dig. Oh, Centaur's trying to go in. There's no shot you get anything done here. Oh, they teleport comes. out of Harry. 
All right, can Yan continue this? Feather okay. Storm with the recall gets flashed out of Santor. Position to contest. Yeah, not going to be able to get, really get anything done about that. Um, you know, Ghostblade is completed uh, for Tomo, but the Gale Force being done already on the other side is really scary stuff. Again, Yan still having those summoners available. Okay, will not look for any eager plays. But actually, he's invading on the blue buff right now. Dignitas will walk up. Cora JJ should see that Santorin's down here. And Pioshik's waiting for him. Goes right in onto Jensen. Flashes available, but the double cyclone. Oh, interrupted, but Santorin picked up as well. Double kill to Harry. Nice. Patient says, I'm going to go past Santorin onto the real target. Yeah, exactly. And then watch where he clones. He clones to over here because this is the only way that Jensen can really run. So Jensen, at times, there was uh, the earlier TL game against 100 Thieves earlier on in the split where Harry kind of just got Gets caught on a Bjergsen flick without a flash, without any sort of setup there. You know, these little mispositioning moments generally mean you automatically lose the team fight. But it also means that when you are playing it out well, you're going to get more credit as well. You're going to be able to be in that position to potentially carry a game it's more of the area. This is all TL. They have got to be able to get forward and cover all these paths for different angles of flank, different angles from engage. Uh, because if the Varus or, or Jensen here, get jumped on. They're, they're gonna lose the fight pretty Speaking much Speaking of, Jensen does not realize he's in trouble. Harry with the combo! Oh. And a solo kill on a Jensen. Nicely done, just knocking him down easily. And now throwing the more. dive. He gets on the Tomo, chain of corruption. Do you take it? Shirking back, flip. <laughs> nah, not feeling it today, but Core JJ is flashing gauge, starts the fight, and Team Liquid commit underneath the turret. Pioshik pretty deep in there, and Zinthor will punish him. Look good to start, will trade. At least Ignar for the jungler. Yeah, Pioshik went deep and then Santorin kicked him even deeper there. They at least get one back, but it's a couple kills and it's a couple turrets, both going the way here of TL, so the gold lead will just extend. We're over three and a half. TL though, marching around the map, just knocking down tower after tower after tower. And there is the new. I wonder how many assists that That's, that's what I'm actually curious. It's probably, it's probably massively above or below 5%, as maybe Summit could get caught here. Flashes are going to go the wall and all out. And you're not going anywhere. Santorin gets the kill credit. That was a... Okay, he backflipped over the wall. Where is he now? Did he get into the brush? Santorin's gonna walk up. Oh, he's still not spotted. Oh, they got him! And Harry almost picked off into the stasis, but with Ignar there, flashes away. Sure can back. Harry's out! Santorin's locked down, but he gets away just in time. Glacial Fissure, prison on to Jensen. As the dragon now focused down from Team Liquid, the fight was dicey, but Dignitas might have bought enough space here. Eric can TP back in though, the fight is not over yet, and Pioshek now has his ulti here again. The dragon's not low. Harry does not have the perfect execution or the flash, but it's still another body on the board, and Dignitas do not have a lot of health bars to work with here. Armut in particular has the all out. Santorin's in, looking for the 50-50, but has to jump right on out. That's Dragon Soul to Team Liquid. Very close, Santorin has the opportunity. You didn't get the Dragon. Can you get the Baron? They got the Control Ward over. He's into the pit. He's stunned, oh, does it, oh. steal it. Baron secured by Team Liquid and Pioshik, but the all out from Armut will grab the jungler. It is two kills for the Baron. Yeah, two kills for the Baron then. Building towards Summer. And hopefully, you know, getting a 3-0 this weekend would put them in a really good spot. So uh, they are still three over on the other side. So Dig is just going to have to try to barrel in here. You've got to flip the game on Elder. Got to see if you can make something happen. But the flank is being set up by Pioche. And yeah, Aries coming over Gorky too. Yeah, all the way up here. Teleport in. And Jensen did not expect that angle. Tumbo engaged on. Now they're looking at the front line. But they already took down Ignore. Pioche's out of the back line. Team Liquid Aries doing it. Double kill to the Akali, and this should be the game ending fight. They're teleporting into the base. Summit wants to end it now. Team Liquid will chase down Armut and Jensen to prevent them from backing and stopping this push. There's not a lot of hope left for Dignitas, and Team Liquid want to keep themselves in the playoff conversation. Armut focused down, Jensen often the carry for the team. Uh, Weaver's wall to safety. Maybe turns out to Core JJ. All right. Trades one back, it's another! Armut trades another as Pioshek comes out of the stasis in onto Jensen. The Nexus is falling though, even if Jensen gets this, which he doesn't. Team Liquid making the playoff race interesting. Double kill to Pioshek as they will take they down up. Dignitas. I don't know if they can. Oh, wait a minute. Low. Jan has to do the Feather Storm flashes. Oh. Jan's got it! Team Liquid wins! Oh man, got dicey for a second there. Uh, TL, we're chasing for. Get the Lucian Nami combo.
Yep, going for Lucian Nami, and that means it is going to be Annie mid for JoJo. So it is much wow, more early game, much more mid game here for EG. Especially, and it looks like they're just going to elect to give it up. They're going to take top side scuttle, deny that mark, uh, just give over that early first dragon, and just shove out that mid wave. So a nice little move here from Immortals. I like, like the look win, but it's. Yeah, he's worried for him. Yeah, he's getting surrounded, but gets that dredge line, lands on FBI, has flash available if he needs it, so exhaust. Oh! Blood! Stack to go with the flash arrow! Yeah, charging up the Q, Q flash in, lets it go and gets the kill there. Really nicely done. Talk about how important it is for this lane. Oh, yeah, and now another, another one! one. Tactical surely gets this! Flashy is feeling it today! Do they give it to Tactical? If he's got the Q off cooldown, otherwise Fleshy should have dredge line to take this one. Guarantee it. Walks back. Fade away! <laughs> Fleshy gets the kill. Oh. oh! Look for the execute. FBI will get that one, but still a two for one. Yeah, that's still really good. Honestly, that last kill though, not worth. You're giving a kill yeah. over to the Lucian. Um, you know, wanted to try to stay in tower range. Oh, JoJo walked down. Yeah, Tactical doesn't have flash, doesn't have heal. JoJo's got the Tibber smacking him. Do they give to FBI though? Now JoJo with the thumbs up says, I'll take this kill credit. Two on the, are not interested in contesting, just given to Immortals. Yeah, it's honestly a little bit surprising. Um, you know, if you're playing Kindred in, into the least, they're expecting that he probably is pathing up towards yeah. that. But I mean, if they can get this crashed and no one shows, they can definitely look at this FBI's nearby too, has a going available. Tibbers, you stun, and the chain CC! Vulcan gets the kill credit. Six Looks like he's maybe going towards you know, Kraken Black Cleaver or something along those lines. Fleshy over the wall. They have the heroic entrance as well. Chain CC onto Inspire. That's Jungler down for EG. JoJo sells the Tibbers. Trying to stack up. Could look for something big here on a Kenby, but we still have. Any without that flash is so much less of a threat to the back line. You know, Andy needs to try to get back there. Also, no Tibbers, because it was actually used, I think, on bot side. So, Kenby's just going, going in. Forward. Balulu just flashes in, sees an Annie, gets the double taunt, plus the Justice Punch back on the Vulcan. But someday and Inspired are fighting on the flank right now. The fight is a little split. So, Immortals, they commit to the tanks. They commit to someday. Pulled over, all out from revenge. And that's top. He's starting to run away with this one. And EG, I think it's going to be hard pressed to kind of get their way back into it. And this is the moment, one item for everyone on EG that you had been setting up as their ideal scenario. This is where their composition could look to start fighting. And the fact that you're losing those fights at that moment is really rough for EG's chances. They're gonna have to start looking for some more desperate yeah. plays to come back. That try push <laughs> waiting for somebody to come his way. This time EG have to walk into them. EG will get this turret. That's gold in their pocket, but it's not gold they can spend before the dragon. It's up in three seconds. So Immortals, they have this brush set up. Inspired has got a flank. How do they want to approach? Ooh, Fleshy's marking Inspired. If they can keep eyes on Inspired, they can just take this dragon. Revenge can just ult Inspired out of the pit. Remember, Bolulu's still over the wall. He was spotted, though. Oh. They actually stepped out of the brush. They know he's there now. JoJo has stun, but he still does not have the Tibbers. Bolulu over the wall. Immortals are not committing to the dragon. They haven't decided if they want to just go for it and then keep Inspired out, guarantee it. They're still a little worried. FBI might be the hero here for Evil Geniuses. Lucian with two items still can do a lot of damage in situations like this. As Evil Geniuses are walking up, Revenge trying to buffer the CC. Fleshy goes in, Balulu with the four! Jam taunt! Blows up Evil Geniuses! And Immortals get a double kill for Tactical, winning this fight easily! And they're gonna get the Dragon right afterward. Even Inspired's not getting out of that one. Playing around with the Dragon Wall, like it can be. Flames his fights down. If Inspired can take down a kill, maybe that's some for him. But he's taking out. Immortals win the fight. Immortals win the fight, and they can even potentially go straight towards Bear, and we'll see if they want to go for it. The respawns are not that long, but Vulcan's still out on the map. Fleshy is hunting. Bolulu is hunting. Vulcan's gonna get caught too. Fleshy. Oh, dredge line, just missing. But he's walking around all you need quickly, and that is gonna be sold. That is gonna be Baron, and almost certainly that is going to be the game here for Immortals, crushing EG to start off Super Week. This is 25 minutes. This is not a late game. Oh, Kindred came online. They outscaled. They got a little sloppy for EG. No. This was Immortals from the first dragon, exhibiting control through the bot lane. Yeah. You know, the, the, the <laughs> Nautilus ult into four, and the Galiotad did the four, you know. We gotta start naming. Cassante, who has looked really strong in this game. And after I was talking about not really liking this matchup, they're gonna try to find Kenby now. 
Subtle onslaught and teleport coming in from Immortals. They want this fight. They say you started it, but we will finish it. Cash and FBI away from the rest of the team. They'll even get someday. And this is surely just the end of the game. They have Baron buff. They have all members up 5v3. They can walk this wave in. Yeah, they're just going to march it in. It looks like they want to go for some kills instead. Revenge chasing Vulcan across <laughs> the base here. Inspired will play goalie as he tries to save his support. JoJo's here. Revenge. This might have been ambitious, but the team is backing him up. Inspired, separated from everyone else in the dredge line, even onto JoJo. Lands a stun onto Fleshy. All right, Inspired's down. Can Immortals still end the game? Ten, ten seconds for FBI. They're onto the Nexus turret. They don't have a wave. They're just going for the kills. Vulcan's down. Jojo Pyun running to the safety of his inhibitor turret, but he ain't even safe there, buddy. Immortals playing upset here and making the playoff race very interesting. Where were you when Immortals upset evil geniuses? They're looking for the ace. Someday gets back to the fountain. Immortals might not even care about it. They can focus the Nexus, but they want that kill. Give it to them someday. Eh, it doesn't matter. Give them the win. 14 to 3. Not even 28 minutes into the game.